There we are. So what do we have? Oh, they're on the run. All right, today I am reviewing the Blue Eddy Elite 100V2, portable power station that I'm gonna be using to charge my drone batteries while out and about tracking animals, filming, and doing all the other station farm work that we do. So let's go through together how it performs and whether it's worth grabbing while it's still on its early bird deals. First up, some of the specs. It's got a 1024 watt hour capacity and it's got 1800 watt continuous output, which is pure sine wave, which is good for sensitive electronics and stuff. So if you're worried about popping things. And with its power lifting mode, you can run gear up to 2700 watts and a surge capacity hitting 3600, which is enough to kick over heavier gear like kettles or toasters. Usually not great for these sort of batteries. They've also got an alternator charging unit. We're gonna see if we can squeeze that in. It has an app and it actually works, unlike other units that I have tested. So with that, you can set custom charge rates using your AC, which is really handy for old wiring or camping setups. So you don't burn things out, pop fuses. And it gives you battery level warnings at 20, 10 and 5%, so you don't die. There's also a full charge reminder, so you're not wasting battery cycles. And it's got a power off memory mode. So if the power cuts, it'll come back on and keep powering your gear. It's good for fridges, UPS work, or monitoring stuff. So that means that when you've told it to be on, and then you've run your battery out, but then it charges back up again, say you've got your solar panels hooked up to it, it will turn back on your AC or your DC, whichever you are using last, which is really good for if it's somewhere out yonder, powering a water point, a camera site, something that you just had to get going at the time. And this is the first thing you've got. It's there, it's handy. You don't need to train anyone up on how to use it, configure it, program it, it's just out. So let's um, have a fiddle with it and see how it goes out there doing the job. First up, let's just power it up and see if she came with any juice. She's at 31%, not so bad, so we're good. But apparently the noise that it makes is setting Bella off. Bella pup. But that was only on boot, so it's gone dead silent. Except for Bella, she hasn't. Now she wants to be a star. Here she is. Bella pup. Oi. She's a little disappointed because uh, the others have gone off to do some cattle work and she got left behind. She would have loved it. Cool girl. Right, back onto the job. Now it did come with all of its cables, so it's got a 240 volt plug and it came with a solar lead. Now this thing can take a thousand watts of solar, which is pretty wicked. Um, so for out at water points and stuff, we can just plug it straight into the solar and have it charging, running this battery so that the water point could run for longer with our 48 volt converter. It's a little up and down but it helps you out in emergency situations. So we've got our charging port over here that is protected with a circuit breaker, but also weatherproof. And that little extra screw was for an earthing plug, which would be good for permanent installations, that sort of thing. All right. So it's on eco mode and it's on grid mode. So it's kind of like a house home inverter and it's bringing in 590 watts at the moment. Yeah, 500 watts. So let's see how well this app connects. And 
it's um, really pleasant that it's not beeping at me from the get-go. Right, so it's taken nothing really. It's identified the unit on Bluetooth. You confirm your serial number. And it's now gonna be bound to the phone and to my account. It's got no internet, which we don't have the Starlink on at the moment. Right, so it's got the, the device is offline, but we're gonna connect to it via Bluetooth rather than using the internet. So it is good that you can hook it up to your phone with no internet connection. All right, there we go. So we've got our power control and it reckons it's gonna take an hour and 24, but you've also got on the app the ability to have it exactly like a home inverter system, hybrid inverter system where you've got PV coming in as well. So in the settings, we've got our Wi-Fi and everything. We've got working modes like standard UPS, PV, like PV priority, so we'll use solar, time control, and then customized. Eco mode. Yeah, cool. Let's turn off eco mode. Charging mode, standard, silent, and turbo. Let's click turbo and see what happens here. So it's slowly winding up what power it's bringing in. All right. That's about all that we're gonna be able to do going through on the app at the moment because we haven't got on a remote deployment on Wi-Fi or anything. So let's grab our 500 odd watt charger for our drone batteries. All right, so we've got our drone batteries in and we'll turn on the charger and see what we've got happening. All right, so it's set to charging one set of the batteries. <coughs> and what's happened is our input load has gone up and our output is sitting at, or climbing as the batteries start charging. So the unit itself will take uh, about 1.2 hours now to charge up. But if we're out in the paddock, it'd be interesting to see how it's going just running off its own capacity. But also we've got the car DC DC charger. So let's whip that open, have a look at it and see if that's gonna be usable for this job. Genuinely a lot smaller than I actually was, was expecting. Oh, hello. We've got a little DIN rail, the Allen keys and some screws. It's got some tech heads for mounting it up. It has got a actual breaker on it. So that is pretty neat. And then for our output, it's got the little PV MC4 plugs. Neat. It doesn't look very weatherproof, so it's gonna to have to be inside the car. All right, for the past little while, I've been a bit busy crawling around under my ute and running the lines to put this DC-DC charger in behind the seat. So, that's um, all good and we've got our outputs here and they come out where that little vent is. This is where a sound system usually would be installed on the premium package. We've got our breaker. Let's fire the car up. Now I could go as far as putting my Starlink line in through where I went as well in the grommet but I want to test this system out first and maybe I'll work out some different wiring routes. Awesome, so that's functioning correctly. It's only charging when the engine's on. It's got one of those little voltage detections, so when the alt is clicked in, it will engage. So I can put everything back together and get out onto the job. But meanwhile, the battery is 100% charged now, and so are my drone batteries. So let's 
pack this gear up and get going. Okay, so the drone has just come back, or well, I've landed the drone over here, and I've just swapped out these batteries. So I'm gonna put some of the shots in here of what, what I picked up with it, which is pretty impressive. But this gives us a good opportunity to get out the battery charger and with the fully charged Blue Eddy there, test out its uh, abilities to charge these batteries. So we're just gonna plug it in. All right. So in the time it takes me for this next flight, these batteries should be fully charged. The Blue Eddy's not charging at the moment because the car's not on and we'll see how much battery it uses from that little box. But in the meantime, time to throw the drone back up and continue its mission. Okay, so, Another two batteries uh, used up. Let's see how the others have gone with their charging. So not quite full yet, but it does give us a set of batteries up the sleeve for continuing to fly. But let's see how much this little unit's used. somewhere around 20% to uh, charge up that pair of batteries. But they have just completed. So they've literally just fully charged in the time it's taken us to use up one set of batteries. So 20% per battery, so two, four, six, 80% gives us four full charges, or four ready to fly charges. Uh, out of this battery unit, which isn't bad, especially if you're you know, doing a couple of flights and then recharging as, as we go with the car. So it'll be interesting to see how much it charges up just in the short drive over to the quad uh, to continue this other job. And <clears throat> I've done enough flying for now. Now I've got my birds coming in. So, uh, it's time to pack the drone away and carry on with the job. All right, I've just started the car. It took about 30 seconds for it to kick into charging. So it is now charging there, bringing in 200, whoop, bring in 220 odd watts and putting out 440. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. It reckons it's going to take three hours to charge back up, but that's discharging as well. All right, so the charger unit did a really good job. It actually charged up that second battery or that second pair of batteries in less time and uh, with less use of the primary source, its battery, than I expected. So it's done quite well. Now it is charging up off the ute and here we are, we've got one hour, nine minutes until it is fully charged. So by the time I get back home, it will be close to nicely charged. So I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with that little unit. You know, heaps of bonuses about it being that I can rip it out of the car, use it anywhere. It doesn't have to be locked in here. I don't have to be in this car. I can take that power source with me to other other places. Uh, small enough that I can throw it in the plane, uh, carry it on a motorbike, whatever. It's a little bit heavy to sort of lump around with you if you're out camping, but then again, it it's only 11 kilos, so that's not a huge amount of weight for its capacity. A uh, little downside, if you'd call it that, uh, it doesn't have like a little quick, like a magnetic 
contactless charger on the top of it, which some of these units do have. <coughs> um, that's not really a big negative for me. It's got high output USB-C ones, so I would not run my microphone and all that flat. And I'd be able to keep all my camera gear charged as well as the drone. So yeah, I, um, I'm liking it. It's going to be pretty cool. I like this ability to charge it out of the car nice and fast and it's usable, but like, it, it's quite usable. Um, so yeah, they have given that to me to test out, try out and keep it, but they haven't paid me to do any promotional stuff. I'm not the biggest fan, especially when they've got, you know, conditions on people doing reviews, like it has to be a positive review. Um, yeah, that they're, they're letting me just crack on with it however I, I see fit. So um, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me try and run with it. Um, I don't actually want to blow it up though because uh, it's quite useful. But they are on special at the moment, their early bird special for uh, $999 Australian dollars and there's a code in the description if you want to have a go at it and reckon it would be a good use case for yourself. So, yeah, thanks for seeing me fiddle around with that thing and um, those cheeky little Easter eggs of what's to come in uh, upcoming episodes about what it is I'm sorting out with this equipment. And at that, I'll leave you to it and I hope that you've gained something from it. So, I'll see you around and let us know what you want me to power up. All right, cheers guys. That's the Blue Yeti or Blue Eddy um, 100V2. Doing good, goes like a rocket.